All right, welcome back. This is the escape course with Dr. VG. It's the lesson one, the introduction. So let's get into it. All right, welcome back. I'm Dr. VG, let's get into it. This is lesson one, week one of our escape course, our introduction. So what are we actually talking about today? Um, we'll actually cover the syllabus uh, for which covers what we're going to be talking about and doing inside of our course for the next nine weeks or however long you choose to do it. And then we'll actually move into lesson one, where we'll explore some of the slides, the presentation, the outlines, and the to-dos, uh, what have you. So let's move right into it. Out on our website with purveyatech.com, you'll find the course management system. You'll find that underneath the gateway section of the site. And once you've registered or created an account on the site, you can actually register for the course itself. Um, you'll find that under the tools, it's the cyan colored uh, 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 menu option off to the left of the course management system. Once you create a free account, you can register for the online course. You'll see it there uh, just choose to register for the course. It'll send you an email, register for the thing, and then you will have an account to be able to get access to this and you will see uh, our course management system. Clicking on our course and moving into our course management system, you'll get to the course materials where we actually find our syllabus. Now, I mean, a syllabus is just, it's just what it sounds like. It's going to be an, a description of what we're actually talking about inside of the course in a single form. Um, you usually go through this at the beginning of a course to make sure everybody's on board with it. Um, uh, why? Uh, I see it as almost like the, the law, really. Uh, whatever I have inside of the syllabus is what I adhere to. I mean, that's what I typically do with my classes uh, in, in, my, in my, my classes in my formal setting, all right? Um, what are we actually talking about here? So we're having a, a course description. What we're actually doing here is covering critical analysis. Ah, as if you didn't know that already. I've been saying it forever. Um, we're talking about the ubiquitous application of uh, critical analysis for perspective and bias, correlation, moral influence, and the equilibrium of liberty, altruism, and justice. How you can apply them in everyday scenarios, uh, how it might apply, where you might be seeing it uh, used, so on and so forth. Um, what you're going to be able to do, compare and contrast the similarities between the similarities and differences between some of the concepts, definitions, the words. Uh, personally, I hate that. Uh, it, it bothers me because I, mean, I, I know my, my vocabulary increases when I read books. It does. Um, I just don't always have the time to do so. I, I really don't. I wish I did. I wish I had more time. Uh, but you'll run into words and concepts that people will, will just throw out in, in the middle of conversations and, <laughs> and you smile because this word will come and whew, right over the top of your head. I have no idea what they're talking about. They just said some word and I heard a bunch of sounds and letters and clicking and clacking and mm. uh, <laughs> I'm just going to try and piece it together and smile. <laughs> because I have no idea what I just said. And that happens to everybody. It does. Um, but nevertheless, we will cover some of the concepts and definitions inside of our course so that everybody's on board with what these things are. Uh, because to be perfectly honest with you, we hear terms thrown around all the time. Um, one thing that I hear frequently all the time, racism and bigotry. Um, yeah, they're two different things. 
prejudice, racism, and bigotry. They're different things. They might be related in some fashion, but the words really aren't the same. And I frequently hear them used in context where they really shouldn't be. Um, so we'll talk about all of that. We'll explore those types of things. Then, of course, we have our algorithms that you can, you can use in your daily life. Uh, we'll teach you how to use those things, how to adjust the weights afterwards. And then, of course, we have textbooks. Uh, what are we actually looking at? Um, we have the textbook, Judge for Yourself, Take Your Own Stand. Uh, you can find that out on Amazon. Um, it's a textbook. The course follows the book in a linear fashion. So, uh, I guess inside of some of my classes, I mean, that's one of the things that students always ask about, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, what kind of resources do I need for this class, right? Because I can tell you one thing. A higher education can be expensive, right? I mean, it can be. We have, you know, tuition, you have fees, you have uh, dorms, you have all kinds of things. But I could tell you something that people don't always think about when they're looking at paying those bills. Uh, books. <laughs> books are expensive. I mean, I have, you know, some of my sons, they have girlfriends, they go through the, you know, the medical uh, uh, curriculum. Um, some of those books are mad expensive. You're looking $200, $300 just for the book. And then you're questioning. I mean, you really got to ask the question. I've just spent $200, throw it down on the table. Give me my book. Now, are we going to be using this book for the next 15, 17 weeks? How about this? I want, I want some more bang for my buck. It would be great if I bought this book for $200 and I used it for two or three different courses. That would be, that would be ideal. But, you know, that's not how it always works. I mean, there are methods and tools that we can use in academia to try and minimize the price and, and books and all of those types of things there. But I believe, I do believe in books because it helps sometimes to uh, pattern a course after a book that you can, you can look at in addition to what the course materials are, in addition to what somebody might be talking about, in addition to some of these learning modules that you might have all over the place. So it actually does work. Um, uh, you just, you, you, you gotta cut down on some of that stuff. And so people always ask, you know, is the book required? The book is required here. It's judge for yourself, take your own stand, you'll find it at Amazon. It's not $300, no, not at all. Uh, $20 for the uh, print version, $10 for the, uh, um, the Kindle type thing. You can read it on your tablet, your phone, wherever you are. Can you use it multiple times? Yes. I mean, it's not exactly a big book. It's actually kind of small. To be perfectly honest with you, because I, you know, I hate reading books where they just roll out with a bunch of fluff, words after words after word for no good reason. The, the fluff has been cut out for the most part in this thing so that you can focus on what you need to focus on. Um, so that's what that is. The book is required. We do follow it. Um, it is, you do need it with the lessons uh, going forward. Um, prerequisites, what are we actually talking about? I mean, you kind of need... Uh, you you kind of need a computer. I mean, you do. You need a computer or a phone. You need something with a browser. So, uh, some type of utility that you can use. The tools that we have here uh, on our site, the algorithms, the courseware, the materials that you do, um, they do use a web browsing and that type of technology. All right. So unless you're in some other type of vector in this course, you will need those kinds of tools to get to get going. All right. So what else? We're talking about environment. Um, it, the course really falls into it really comes in re, three real formats. You have the online face to face and this hybrid seminar type thing. The, I mean, you can look at a hybrid and seminar as almost two separate things. But nevertheless, face-to-face, -face, we are not in face-to-face -face right now. Um, you could run this course inside of a formal setting, inside of a school or, or something like a village center or what have you. Um, the hybrid thing would be like the online. 
I mean, so typically most people will interact this or interact and use this course in an online fashion. Um, you're free to proceed as you will. Um, it's asynchronous. You're not required to attend at any particular time. So that's what we're actually meaning with the asynchronous online. Um, you proceed at your own pace. It is set up to be nine weeks. You don't really have to take all nine weeks. Heck, you, it's not any, It's not like you have cops looking over your shoulder. You don't have to take it at all. <laughs> you just don't. It's really to your benefit. If you find benefit out of it, proceed. If you don't find benefit out of it, roll on. I mean, that's Jiffy Tiles, right? Right. Um, so you're looking for the hybrid thing. We don't, uh, that requires something separate. I mean, it is, it, it is hybrid in a way that you do still do portions of the work online. Um, but a lot of the, 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 the lecture based materials is done, um, uh, real time. Okay. So, I mean, either some type of zoom or teams or WebEx or whatever. I mean, we have all kinds of tools nowadays to try and pull that stuff off. Um, so that you would get a facilitator doing this in person. I mean, because it's all about talking. It's not just me, blah, 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 talking about a bunch of crazy stuff. The best seminars I've ever run, uh, education I've ever run, uh, was when somebody else got a chance to speak. I've had students in my class and they're like, oh, Doc V, this is not, the, the college is so liberal. I'm so thankful I, I got an opportunity to say something that I, I really want to say because I feel shut down. That should never happen. You just shouldn't do that. Not in education setting. Not in an education setting. To be perfectly honest with you, it'd be great if we didn't do that in reality. But in an education setting, you should always have an opportunity to provide your own perspective. I mean, that's part of learning, man. I mean, that's, that's, that's the way that goes. Uh, I might not agree with what you're saying over there, but I learned that somebody might look at this in a, in a different fashion. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. We should be celebrating this. We will talk about that as we move forward. But nevertheless, um, in an online fashion that we are uh, asynchronous and uh, we don't have the synchronous actions there. Attendance, because if we, if you are online, you don't have to worry about that. I mean, a syllabus works for anything. So there are things inside of the syllabus that speak to seminars or, or hybrid or face-to-face, -face, which really won't apply to an online audience. Academic conduct, don't cheat. Come on, people. <sighs> I have to talk about this every semester. I do. Look. If you're online, and this is not in some type of formal setting, well, then you don't have to worry about this too much. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, to accept reality, you can cheat to your heart's content. It's not like I'm going to be looking over your shoulder. Not at all. I try to tell that to some of my students over time, you know, right, in some of my other classes. And if you know, it's, I mean, if I'm teaching software development and you know, I mean, to be honest with you, in software engineering, the holy grail is reuse and components and architectures, and you really shouldn't be reinventing the wheel unless you're trying to teach low-level concepts. Um, don't cheat. When you finally get out into corporate America where I've been and you encounter somebody like me, I will realize that you cheated. Uh, and the last thing you want is to, you know, be out there with kids and thrown out on the street because you're, 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 you're fake. You don't, you, you don't want that. Um, so I say, help yourself out. Don't cheat. Uh, we, everything here in this course, for all intents and purposes, is online, open book, open notes, even the assignments. I mean, it, everything's open. It's really for your benefit. Uh, course time, you can go through that. We have online, hybrid, face-to-face. -face. It kind of talks about what those types of things are. The activities and assignments, you, there are some restrictions on those things. Uh, assignments are, it's, it's a system limitation. They are single attempt. <laughs> That's what they are. People say, I want to do it over. Nope, you don't get a chance to do it over. You have to do it once. Make sure it's right. I say, 
uh, write it out in another sheet or type it up in another thing and then uh, proofread it, make sure it's what it is, and then you post it. Uh, that would be the smart way of doing this. Like, like building my deck outside. Um, yeah, I got one real chance to set those posts. <laughs> if you set them and they're cockeyed, standing up like this, well, that's going to be the price you pay. Because now you've screwed up the hole. The earth itself has been shifted. Uh, you, sh you move to the side. I mean, sure, you could put stuff there, but the integrity of the earth is not like it was. So make sure you do it right the first time. That's what that was actually referring to. There are digital badges that you can earn uh, at the end of this particular course. After you go through their assignments each week, there is a final exam, <laughs> right? Still open notes, uh, but there is a final exam and all of that's calculated up and according to what you've earned, uh, you can uh, be granted a digital credential, digital badge uh, provided by Open Badger. You can post the things out there. I know it works with Teams. Um, LinkedIn, any place you want to present the fact that I went through the course and I have some skills on critical analysis that I may or may not have had before, but at least you can go out and see that I was quite accomplished at doing this. And these are the criteria for which I received uh, uh, this badge. So uh, you, you do have that uh, stuff that you can walk away with. All right. Incidentals, last things there. I mean, I, I usually tack this on to all of my syllab uh, syllabus at the end. Um, uh, it's really, for all intents and purposes, uh, the syllabus is subject to change, right? I mean, a lot of people say, I mean, you're not paying any money right now. I mean, that's, that's, that's not how this works. But if you were paying money and I presented a course and this is what we say we're going to do and it's the end of the semester and we only got through half, half of the stuff, that you said that you were going to cover? Uh, not everybody's happy with that. But there are things that happen and you just got to be on board with that because, I don't know, acts of God, institutional mandates, uh, war. Now, I live in the United States of America. I love my country. Um... We, to be honest with you, it is the way that it is, and I'm not going to, well, we'll talk about that in the future. Um, we don't necessarily have bombs falling on our heads over here. We don't. There's a reason for this. Um, and I, again, we will talk about that. But because of that, I don't necessarily have to worry about war too much. But you do have the specter. The demon is in the corner. Uh, nuclear war is something that persists. The threat of it, anyway. Um, that is there. You must, be, you must be aware of it. National crisis? Pandemics? Ha! Yeah, that's a thing now. So you do have to keep that kind of stuff in mind as well. All right. So even though we do have a syllabus and we do have things, I mean, it's... it's it is subject to change. I go out of my way to make sure it remains the same, but things do happen. Um, in class, sessions are subject to audio-visual recording. It really doesn't apply to you. I'm not recording you through your, your internet connection. Uh, that's just preposterous. But inside of my class, in a formal setting, oh yes, I most absolutely do record everything, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, why? I mean, who doesn't do that nowadays? Nevertheless, you have the course stuff. The first week, we're talking about intro, syllabus. Um, second week, we move into perspe or perception, perspective, and then bias correlation. As you see there, we round out the course talking about the algorithms and using the weights to adjust them to give us different results uh, uh, once we do. And then, of course, down here at the bottom of your syllabus, and this isn't the syllabus that you would see online that you would uh you can you, you can download i mean so if you're on the, the gateway and you look at the the description for the course management system you'll find a syllabus out there no this navigation at the bottom only appears when you actually have registered for the course and you're you're in here 
it actually covers different, er, it expands upon the weeks uh, and sends you out to where the materials actually are. And uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and take a break um, so that you can go out and do the stuff you need to do before I continue on with the second half of our presentation.